everything's going really good. I just filmed this entire video, uh, then realized it was out of focus and that the mic wasn't plugged in. So off to a pretty hot start with this one. What is up everybody? Welcome back to Recaps. This is week question mark because of COVID and stoppages and holidays and New Year's. I don't know what week of hockey this is. I'll figure it out for next week, but I have no idea. I'm Ben, this is Chirpin DMV, and I will be your guide to all things Washington Capitals hockey as usual. Excuse my voice and my runny nose and potentially my runny eyes and if I'm sneezing or something, I have COVID and it just sucks it just sucks all the energy right out of you so imagine my excitement when i went to edit this video and it was out of focus and there was no mic plugged in that was that was awesome but anyways yeah i've missed a lot of games because i uh, was out of town the week before the stoppage that i didn't know was coming and so i couldn't film one of these and then uh, when i got back it was all shut down everything so i was already like too late i couldn't do a recap it would have been irrelevant so i missed the pittsburgh game that i said they were gonna win they lost i mushed them there i didn't get to talk about the buffalo game which kind of sucks because i was actually there live i saw Oshi's goal in the shootout it was awesome Some of the worst wind I've ever experienced some of the power was out there was like water blowing from the ocean onto the highway which was a really good treat. Missed the Chicago game, uh, which I also said they were going to win. Mushed them there. Backstrom was back, though. He got a point. That was nice. Didn't get to talk about the Winnipeg game that had my boy, Brendan Dillon, Dilly Dilly. He scored his first of the season against the Capitals. They ended up getting the win. Ovi scored a goal. It was just like the perfect game for me. And then I missed the LA game where Joe Snively made his debut. It's obviously not as big of a deal to me not being from the area, but I'm sure everyone from that area, that's gotta be very cool if you're a Capitals fan. But anyways, yeah, I'm like running out of breath just saying that because of the COVID. So let's just get into this. Um, we had that random, really chippy Nashville game that came out of nowhere. It was cool though, you got Backstrom, Kuzi, and Oshi all back from COVID and Tom Wilson back from IR. First game all season, like after Christmas where we had all four of our regular centers in the lineup. That's insane, especially considering the Capitals are still like top three in the standings. This was also the first game with like the modified taxi squad thing going on. So Alex Alexiev, the Capitals first round pick from the year they won the cup, 31st overall, he makes his NHL debut. And Michael Kempney, he came back after missing like almost two years of regular season NHL hockey and starting this season in the minors. And he looked pretty good. And I'm not just talking about his long hair because now he just looks even more gorgeous than he already did, which is pretty nuts. But he looked good on the ice, which was nice. Samsonov got the start in this one and the Capitals started things off early. Eller from Carlson and Wilson and Ovi. You have to mention all of them because his passing play was nice, but it ends with Carlson back door to Eller, the Tiger. He scores to make it one nothing. Then shortly after, John Carlson gets a nice pass from Nick Backstrom, which shouldn't be surprising because he's never thrown a bad pass. Just nice to see him connecting, two of my absolute boys. And John Carlson just snipes it as per usual because his shot that I've compared to many different weapons is also like a meteorite or a comet, you know, just it's fast and unstoppable. So just like don't look up when he's shooting. Good reference. And then Carl Hagelin throws an unreal backdoor pass to Nick Dowd to make it 3-0 at the end of the first. When you have Carl Hagelin clicking like that, your team must be clicking pretty well. And they were at this point. But then the second period rolls around and they just blow their three goal lead completely. And the game gets just so needlessly chippy. And I say needlessly because there are two teams, one from the Eastern Conference, one from the Western Conference. They have no rivalry history whatsoever. But like Tom Wilson smokes Ryan Johansson, just like absolutely dumb. Him, and then Boro Cop steps in, they get in like a brutal fight, they barely even throw any punches, whatever. But then Oshi and Orlov smoke two guys in one shift, and then there's rough stuff going on there. It was just in a really intense, like a really randomly intense game for the first game back from holidays, and I was all there for it. It really sucked me into the game, honestly. Speaking of holidays, I didn't even say good me, good me being a nice guy here. Uh, happy holidays, happy new years. Uh, I know it was a little tougher this year to celebrate. I personally know with COVID going through my house and everything it was tougher but hope everyone got to spend time with their families in some capacity because it was a it was a tough year you know this is a uh, earth going uh, two and oh on tough years we're hoping to shut down the three peat get the virus out of my body and out of my life 
But then in the third period, Capitals get a power play. Kuznetsov, puck bounces to him back door, gets completely robbed. Like stone cold gunpoint robbed by UC Soros. And it's just like the Capitals can't buy a goal in the power play. But thankfully, not too long after, Kuznetsov on his Kuzu Revenge Tour just steps right out just in front of the net, snipes it short side. And I mean, like, I say snipe for a lot of goals, but like this is like next level snipe you know like he unloads this thing short side to take the lead does the bird he's feeling himself for good reason too capitals have the lead but then there's this weird penalty mix up where sherry goes in the box but it was supposed to be tom wilson so the refs sort that out the refs were a story this whole game which you hate to say but like not even like a biased like opinion it was like objective like bad calls against washington bad calls for washington the refs were just all over the place. Like Alan May was cheesed about it on the broadcast too. But anyways, besides that, uh, Carl Hagelin buries the empty netter. Like I said, Hagelin's clicking, the team's clicking. They get two points in a game they probably shouldn't because they blew a three-goal lead. But it's nice to know that if they're blowing three-goal leads, they're at least dialing it in at some point in the game and regaining the lead and getting the two points. So not their best effort, but still a nice chippy game where they secured two points. But yeah, randomly violent game. Next up, we had the game against Detroit. Lucas Johansson making his debut, brother of the guy that Tom Wilson nearly crippled in the last game. I want to say he was the Capitals' 2016 first-round pick. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it was 2016. He's a guy that I was excited for when they drafted because I was like naive back then and just thought that if they're a first-round pick, they're good. Uh, and I'm not saying Lucas Johansson's bad, but he has not had the smoothest of rides in the AHL or anything like that, so it's nice to see him make his debut. Also, Eller was out for this one, so that's one game this season where the Capitals have had all four of their regular centers in. Just take that right away from them, because why could we have nice things, right? Sammy back in the net for this one, because I'm pretty sure at this point VTech was on COVID protocol as well, which again, is awesome. Love the virus. Also, Orlov's 600th game, and as a Capital, which is underrated. Like, this guy's been around since like the Bruce Boudreaux days, which I didn't even think about. I think I heard him say that on the broadcast, but that's insane. He's been here through it all. He's been like a rock the whole time he's had his ups his downs this season especially has been a big up him and jensen together have been a match made in heaven essentially they played so well together shutting other teams down and generating offense he's obviously one of the better hitters in the nhl sneakily too people don't think about him but he's thrown some of the biggest hits in the last like five or six years like that hip check on duchene is like iconic at this point but anyways congrats orlov love having you as a capital you don't win cups without a guy like orlov behind a guy like john carlson just shutting things down keeping it steady on the blue line so that that's awesome i hope we have him for another 600 games but anyways the red wings start the scoring in this one in the second period uh on the power play kuznetsov fails to clear it the Red Wings strike, it's 1-0. But then it's Kuznetsov Redemption on the Kuzi Revenge Tour. He gets what is honestly a pretty bad pass from Lucas Johansson. It's like in his skates, going up the middle of the ice, but he like kicks it up, goes to the Detroit D. He picks it right off the D stick, goes around Thomas Grice and roofs it. Nice goal. Johansson gets his first point in the NHL. Not pretty, but I mean, there's uglier points to get, so congrats to him. This was also Kuzi's 450th point. I had no idea he had that many points, so that's awesome, good for him. Then after a while, the Capitals power play finally scores. They went like, what was it, December, like one for 30 chances or something like that. But this time the power play scores and it's finally Ovechkin from deep to what we, we thought it was a power play goal. It was like during the game, they weren't sure if it was. After the game, they weren't sure if it was. But finally it was solidified that it was a power play goal. Ovi from deep. He's like at the blue line. Just unloads one of his patented one-timer. Haven't seen a lot of those go in this year, but this one finds the back of the net. That one's his 275th most power play goals of all time. Now, I didn't even like really think about it that much because he's been chasing this record for so long and it was like inevitable he was going to get it, but that's like nearly an unbreakable record. Like I didn't really like take in how many power play goals that is. 275 is no joke, so that's like that's probably an untouchable record that Ovechkin just got. It was just like inevitable though, so it was like I, I wish I could be more excited for it, but I knew he was going to get it at some point. But anyways, congrats. That's so still unreal. This was also his 23rd goal of the season, and it was putting him on a seven game point streak, which I'm pretty sure I've said like three times this year. Like he's just, he's always on like a seven game point streak. And then who else but Ovi scores the empty netter in the McNugget minute, no less. The guy just lives to give, and the Capitals win the game three to one, literally just because Ovi decided he wanted to win the game which has happened before. Remember that LA game last year or two years ago? He just decided that he was gonna win the game. He did that here too. Then finally, we got the New Jersey game. Tough to get excited for New Jersey games. I'm just gonna be honest, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks that way. 
and especially when you get the news that Backstrom and Oshie are out with non-COVID illnesses. I don't know what is going on with Backstrom and Oshie. These guys just can't find a way to stay healthy. Like getting the flu after being on COVID protocol and missing time with lower body injuries, like it's absurd. These guys are still out like today in the game against St. Louis. They're not traveling, they're on IR right now. So Backstrom really can't catch a break in his road to recovery. Oshi is just like the textbook definition of a band-aid right now, which sucks because he's such a vital part of the team when he's playing. But hopefully they come back uh, bigger and stronger after this one, but doesn't kill you, right? But we got Nick Jensen, Justin Schultz, and Daniel Sprong back in the lineup from COVID protocol. So it's nice to filter in some regulars while we filter out some regulars, which is just a routine this year. Samsonov starting his third game in a row, and the Devils score like twice in a minute to take a 2-0 lead early, which was just awesome. Really good stuff. But then there's one person who's not going to stand for that, and that's John goddamn Carlson. And he snipes it and again i like i said with guzzi i say snipes a lot this is one of those upper tier ones he roofs this thing i had to tweet it in slow motion because i couldn't even fathom it he just unloads it so fast and so hard and just bar down like as bar down as it can get and he just skates away so casually because he does that like probably like every day of his life like in practice and everything so it's so easy for him but jesus christ that was nice capitals are within striking distance doesn't last long though because 22 seconds into the second period the devil score on a tip and i said this out loud watching the game tips are so frustrating because who do you blame like you can blame the winger for letting the shot off but even if you're like in blocking position it can still get around you you can blame the d for not having a stick on it but like the way these guys are tipping pucks these days like you could cover them perfectly they can still get a stick on it change direction and goalies can be in perfect position but if the puck's going a different way like you can only react so fast so just frustrating you can't blame anyone but it just pisses you off and the capitals looks like they're going to get a break and a goal on a shorthanded two-on-one with Haglin and dowd but if Carl Hagelin doesn't score on basically a wide open net and I hate laughing because like I love Carl Hagelin but it's just like the fact that the joke is so true that he like doesn't score on empty nets is just, it's tough but it's so funny and then Dowd and Subban like Dowd hit someone and Subban and him getting like one of the worst fights I've ever seen there's like again like no punches thrown but it pumped Dowd up because he goes out and scores like one of the goals of the year that's not going to be talked about because it's Nick Dowd but it was disgusting he backhands the puck up in the air and then bats it in like it's road hockey which is just an insane amount of skill and I tweeted like jokingly I said like Nick Dowd scored a super skilled goal and then I said like something about like that's not like a sentence you expect to write I got a little bit of heat saying like Dowd scored skilled goals I know I know he's really skilled I was just like joking because he's a fourth line player but uh yeah what a goal it was unreal and Nick Dowd this year has just been awesome like when he's been able when he's been healthy and able to play he's just been he's such a sick fourth line center I tweeted that too if McDavid or Crosby score that it's like one of those like can you believe it moments but it's Nick Dowd so it's just out in the wash I guess but then Connor Sherry after Mackenzie Blackwood serves up a little Caesars hot and ready deep dish right up the middle of the large Eller feeds it to Sherry back door he ties it with like four minutes left in the game I feel like Sherry has a lot of these late clutch like game tying or game winning goals this year it's just like he's quiet but he works his bag off and he scores those big goals so uh just what a signing game's tied and uh you just love to see it but that of course means this game goes to overtime and I don't need to tell you what happens there because the Capitals lose every overtime and this one's no different. Spinorama pass in front from Jack Hughes to Nico Heischer, wide open in front, snipes it past Samsonov. They lose to the Devils for the first time in like two years. Yeah, no, it sucks. I hear they've been like working on three on threes in practice. So hopefully something good comes of that. Cause like, obviously it's not too big of a deal cause it's only a regular season thing. But like Tarek said on the podcast, if the division comes down to one point, you're gonna wish you won some of those games. Um, make sure you listen to the podcast. We had Tarek El-Bashir of The Athletic and NHL on TNT on. He was awesome as usual, just so insightful. This guy has like more knowledge about any question you ask him hockey wise and capitals wise that i like he could give you a more detailed answer about that than i could give about my personal life like that's how knowledgeable he is he also gave a pretty hot take on who the capitals could acquire at the deadline i won't spoil who but just check out our socials listen to the podcast it's pretty insane the thought never even crossed my mind because again i'm just not intelligent Anyways, good luck to the Caps against St. Louis tonight, Minnesota tomorrow. Connor McMichael, healthy scratch against St. Louis. People are pretty upset about it. Um, you know, he's uh, he's not contributing any more statistically than like a Brett Leeson or an Alexi Protus. And, uh, you know, if they're going to filter those guys in another lineup, I think it's fair that McMichael gets filtered out, even though he's like a higher end prospect still, if he's playing the same as them, why not? 
take him out as well and give other guys a bit more of a chance you know I understand it also St. Louis is a big physical team McMichael's not the size of Leeson or Protus he'll probably get back in tomorrow against Minnesota anyways and even if not it's only two games he's missing against two again big physical teams so uh no I'm not not too worried about that but uh I guess we'll see what happens we got them in Boston coming up and then that's pretty much it until my next video so uh but anyways yeah thanks for watching and again uh happy holidays happy new years and I hope everyone was able to celebrate with family and stay as healthy as possible i know this thing's going around like wildfire went through my house i got it so i completely understand it's tough but i hope you made the best of it and um thanks for watching i'll uh, see you next thursday probably we all know how unreliable i am so uh anyways again uh thanks for watching stay tuned for the next one peace out